All right guys, so today in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a method that a digital marketing expert shared with me on how he's getting a 7X ROI on real estate wholesale leads in Southern California, in the toughest market in the country. And so not only is he getting a 7X ROI, but he's using a source and a method of lead generation that no one else is talking about. It's the best inbound lead source generation method that there is, and it's not PPC, it's not Facebook, and it's not SEO, it's actually YouTube. And the reason YouTube works so well is because it's a blue ocean. No one else is using YouTube to generate leads at a high level. And if they are, they're not talking about it because it's crushing so well for them right now. But I found an underground expert by the name of Corey, who's going to teach you guys today exactly how you can go and start using YouTube in your business to generate inbound leads and generate motivated sellers so that you don't have to worry about talking to crappy leads or paying tons of money for PPC. It's going to be cheap, easy, and simple. And I want you guys to go through this entire free training because it's going to show you exactly how you can start doing this today in your business and get huge returns. So like I said, he's getting 7x ROI and not only one of the hardest markets in the country, but also the most competitive market in the country. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you guys to the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, really quick. I just wanted to give you guys like a 30,000 foot view of the customer journey when they come from an inbound ad or, or an inbound lead that comes from an ad. So this is the journey and this is all the like components to it. So you have your ad leads to a landing page. You have a survey or form that collects data and then you have a thank you page and all these things should do their own job. No, you're good. Yeah, it's yeah. most visible. There it is. Yeah, perfect. can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Perfect. So with this, and I'm going to go into each one of these in a little bit more detail, like a little bit later on, but just to give you guys an overview of the customer journey, you have the ad landing page, you know, your survey or form, and then your thank you page. So the ad consists of, you know, generally you have an angle, which we'll get into a bit. You'll have a call out, which you definitely want to do with YouTube ads. You have your hook, your body copy, which is going to include like your call to actions and stuff like that. And then targeting, which I'm going to throw in kind of like in this ad category. And we're going to go into all those here in a second second. Landing page, you, you really can break it down into two pieces. You have like your before the fold, which is what loads immediately. Uh, and then you have after the fold. But your survey form is really there to convert the right people, exclude people you don't want, and then transfer data. So you want to be able to transfer data to your CRM, to your reps. And then you also want to be able to transfer data back to Google so that their algorithm can do what it does. And then the thank you page, what you should have on there is your goal should be to keep the person on on there for five minutes plus to so your reps or you should be calling these leads within five minutes. But the idea is you want to keep them there, kind of warm up the prospect and, and kind of get their guard down a little bit. So like the best is to have like a video where it's you or one of your reps or somebody who can kind of give off like a really like local sort of family owned vibe where, where it just kind of like makes people let their guard down a little bit. Just tell them a little bit about the business, about how you got started, maybe a testimonial if you have it. And then you want to have a place to book after hours. So like if people come in at like 2 a.m., even if you're running ads on a schedule, you want to have a place to book because sometimes people will like save a tab and then fill it out like when they get off of work or whatever. So that's kind of like a high level overview there. And then in here, this is just the order of importance in terms of like what you should focus on, right? Because if you don't have all day to focus on nothing but the marketing, you want to focus on these things on the left because this is like important in, in order. So the offer is the most important. You don't have a ton of wiggle room with the offer because you're kind of like buying property. So an example of that that you could change and, and that I've seen is like you can give a cash advance. Like that's that's a different offer. Like, hey, like we'll give you money, $10,000 cash advance if we decide we're going to buy your property. Something like that, right? Your angles, which is like how you're going to target different segments of your market, your ad hooks, your landing page before the fold, and then your targeting. So like if you just focus on these things, that should be enough for you to get some pretty great results with ads. So obviously you have to do the other stuff. But even if you just ripped that other stuff, you'd probably still do pretty good as long as you focused on these things here. I was going to say, okay, so for angles, one, mm -hmm. what does that mean? And then two, I want to highlight something else is like, I think the thank you page, that's such a good gym. I don't think that having them tell a story of like maybe like the founder's journey or like how the company started or how you help people and testimonials, that's such a good idea because you, you got to warm them up a little bit. Or I feel like it's really good to warm them up before you talk to them. And they're like, oh, I really like this idea, I really like this company. And then boom, you call them and you're a little bit less of a cold prospect that you're talking to. It's like really good. It's really nice. I like that. Yeah. So like, like having like a very like local kind of like let them know that they're talking to an actual person that you're not just some like fly by night legion company or whatever. Um, It's just a, a little edge that you can have. And then also like if you guys have run ads and stuff in the past, especially with like leads and stuff where people fill forms out, you could call someone 10 minutes later and they're like, sometimes they're like, what, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I want to sell my house, but I don't remember. Or 
I don't remember filling out like warm, keeping them there, like they're still engaged by the time they get the call. So it's like, there's no gap for them to like get distracted. That's a big piece. Angles, I'm about to get into that here in a second. So I'm going to give you guys some examples of those specific to this industry. I'll also give you some examples of like hooks that I'm running right now that are brushing. So how to actually write the ads. This is what we'll talk about in terms of like those structure, in terms of like the angles, the hooks and whatnot. So before we go into like the actual angles themselves, this is what your structure will kind of look like. So like if you're not going to just like come up with random ideas throughout the day, you want to kind of like have a structure so that you know where to create more ads. So let's say you have three angles that you've come up with. You're going to want to create at least three hooks, variations of hooks for each angle. And I'm going to explain what those are here in a second. But this is just a way for you to kind of like have a workflow of how you're going to create these ads. It all starts with the offer. Then you create the angles and then you create hooks off of those angles. Okay. So here's some example angles here, right? So, you know, the person doesn't like realtors. They don't like realtors. And you're going to agree with that person and say like realtors suck. Like that's, that's an angle. A person inherited a property they don't want and they want to sell it. That's another like group of people. And that's like an angle you can go after. And then, and these are just random. Like we use like this one we, we have running. So I have some examples. Tried to sell with a realtor before, and then it didn't work for X, Y, Z reason. That's another angle. So that's kind of like when you make your hooks, it's going to be based off of those angles. Does that make sense to everybody? Because like when I first learned this, like it was, I didn't really understand what the difference was, but does everybody get that? Like, it's kind of like the overarching like theme of how you're going to write your ads. Yeah, it makes no sense for me. I think it's a super good way to look at it because you're like, okay, well, let's try this approach and then let's try to write a couple of different hooks for this approach. It, it makes total sense. Do you use any general ones? Like basically like we used to run a TV commercial that basically said, if you want to sell your house for cash fast, then like blah, blah, blah. Like that was kind of like the hook. Are you seeing any like general basic broad ones like that working or does it need to be something more niche as far as the angle? Yeah, good question. Yeah, we do. We have like more broad ones, but I still try to classify it into an angle. So like put a heavier focus into the angle. So like what you just said, I would probably make that all about like speed. So I'd write mm -hmm. ads like all about how fast it is. Like an angle, probably the, the most spin that we have on an angle besides like inherited properties is just people don't want to deal with the hassle. They use the word BS a lot. So we use the word BS in our ads. So just talking about like all the just annoyances of it and then just taking that off their plate. Like that's a good angle. Um, so you can free or something like that. Yeah, or, like you just start listing off like all the headaches that are going to come with it. Just be like, like I'll give you an example. Like if you call out the audience, say like, you know, Georgia homeowners, you know, if you need to sell your house quickly, but you're, you don't want to deal with like high realtor fees, paying, you know, property taxes, this just start listing shit off mm -hmm. that is just going to like make oh, them that kind of yeah, stuff. Repairing exactly. your property, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and, and if you just had one, like an angle could just be like list everything. And you mm -hmm. can try that. Like using this in example, like I'll give you, these are some like active hooks we run that do really well, but these are like all hooks based around this, which is just an inherited property. So someone has an inherited property and I'll show you guys, you know, you can target that in YouTube or in Google, but basically like we have this so California homeowners, you know, if you recently inherited a property, but you don't want to put up, like that's kind of what we are talking about. You don't want to put up with the repairs, paying our property taxes, expensive realtor fees, then listen up. This one's like more of the same, but you can see how it's kind of just a variation of the same idea. So this would be more so just saying it's hassle free and then explicitly saying like, if you've inherited from a family member, a loved one, that's the only way you can really inherit something anyway. But like, mm -hmm. just like calling that out, it's another way to say it. This one here. But they also feel that a little bit too. You just like, you just test different stuff, test different hooks. Like you'll get the idea for it. And, and if you're like actually putting budget behind it, you'll see what works and what doesn't. Like I can tell you, I think this one, like, like this bottom one here, I think they all did pretty well, but this one like outperformed. So you'll see ones that like stick out that outperform the other ones. Do you guys get like the hook, like how the hooks come off the angles? Cool. Yeah, it's it's super straightforward. I mean, you're just to put this in like layman's terms for like stuff that like all investors will understand too, from the way I'm understanding it is take like what you would say one on one, but then bundle that up into a message that would resonate with the masses that you want to do more business with. You know, there's already pain. We all know what, what the pain points are on the sales calls. So it's like, just put that into a hook and call out the right audience. Like you're just saying, I want to talk to people who just inherited a property. Okay, well, what do they care about? Boom, that's the hook. And I think the, the reason the last one worked really well, in my opinion, is because it, it kind of deals with both hooks and it seems really, really good. I mean, I, I think that's a great hook. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, this one is like specifically like trying to just trying to twist the knife a little bit in the hook because it's like, 
you know, a house that you didn't ask for because you think mm-hmm. that's kind of what they're thinking. They're like, I didn't want this. Mm-hmm. Can someone just take yeah, it all? Can I get the cash? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of that angle. And then, so this is like the overall ad structure. So we kind of went over like examples of the angles, the hooks and everything like that. But when you actually write the whole ad, it would fall under this structure. Like this is the easiest way I can think to explain like how to write the entire ad. So once you kind of have your angles and your hooks, um, one thing that does go before the hook is the call out. So if you guys are in specific markets, the easiest way to do that is just say like, you know, California homeowners, or, you know, if you own a home in California, California residents, homeowners in California, say it a bunch of different ways, um, but make sure you call out that audience, the hook we already talked about, right? That's where you're going to like hook the person in and make sure that like, it's the specific audience that you're looking for. Um, And then a big promise. I think that might even have been up here, right? Like, it's like, you know, not only will we buy your house, but we're so confident in what we do that we guarantee to get you the cash you deserve for your home in less than 30 days, right? So that's like your big promise. Like you're promising them that they can, that you can buy their house in 30 days, right? And then after that, it's the body copy. And and with that, you kind of want to just like sweeten the deal if you can. If you, if you have a really good testimonial, that goes really well right there too. So if you can be like, we're so confident we can buy our house in less than 30 days, just like we did with Melinda and then cut to a video of Melinda being like, I was so stressed out. I was drowning in debt. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. And then I met Chandler and they helped me through. It was so easy process, got the cash. I got $750,000 and now I'm doing X, Y, Z. So if you can have that, which you can get by interviewing people, like and asking them questions to get that, that answer, that fits right there really well. Otherwise, just like strengthen the deal or strengthen the, uh, just try to kind of push them over the edge by giving away like more stuff. Like, hey, we'll also cover your rent. Uh, We'll pay for your moving expenses, whatever you want to say in there to kind of like enhance the deal for them. doesn't matter if your house is a complete fixture up or or in perfect condition. Like, you know, we're here to help. We're here able to help you um, in whatever situation kind of thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. In one of these sections, you'd want to handle some objections there too. So like they might think, yeah, my house is in too bad of shape. And then you say something like that. Like it's like house or whatever yeah whatever you can handle those objections in one of these sections here for the for the body copy so one section it doesn't really matter where it is one section of the body copy i would just sweeten the deal and then one section handle objections just like Chandler was saying say like you know it doesn't matter if there's tenants in the property doesn't matter whatever doesn't matter there's a fire put that in there call to action, second body copy, same sort of thing. And then another call to action is just like, you know, so if you're tired of dealing you know, with realtors, just bringing the tire kickers, yet, blah, 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 you know, click the button below, fill out this short form, and then we'll get you a cash offer for your house in five minutes or less, whatever. Something like that is all the call to action is. So any questions on like the, the structure of the ads or anything like that? I think it's pretty straightforward. I really like it. Okay, cool. All right. So yeah, campaign structure. So this is like, if you've run like Facebook ads or ads anywhere else, this is different than Facebook ads by a lot. So with Facebook ads, like typically what you'll see people do is do like, they'll do the budgets like at the ad group level. Um, So you have like a campaign, you have a bunch of different ad groups or they ad sets or whatever they call them. And it's going to have like different targeting or different demographics or whatever on each of those ad groups. And then you're going to be testing a bunch of ads underneath each one of those ad groups. With YouTube, you only want to do one campaign, one ad group. That's where your targeting is going to be as well, like in your ad group. And then one to five ads per campaign. So if you want to test those same ads, for instance, and you want to do different targeting, you'd want to do an entirely new campaign, new ad group, and then you can have those same ads. But you don't want to put too many ads or have multiple ad groups because Google's not good at splitting the spend between ad groups. The budget's all at the campaign level. Um, And it's also not like if there's a performing ad that's performing a little bit better than the other, it'll suck all the budget out of all the others if you have multiple different ad groups. So like one ad group just won't even end up being used. So the structure that works the best is just one campaign, uh, one ad group, ideally whatever you're targeting is around that angle. And then you have those ads, one to five ads per campaign. That's the structure that works best. Oh yeah. And then, so here's just like a little note. If you don't want to be in the ads yourself, like I know some people have a problem with that. I have some people that we use that I can send you guys later, but you can use backstage.com, not backpage.com, backstage. (laughs) 
Facebook.com, uh, Fiverr or Upwork. And you can find people on there. Just look up like video spokesperson, you know, video actor, stuff like that. I've hired people on all these. It's kind of like hit or miss. It's best if you can do it yourself because it's free. But these are some places you can do it if you want to. Um, or you, I have some guys too. If you need like an older guy, I have a really good older guy that's on Fiverr. So I can I can give Chandler the link or something if you guys want it. Um, and then, so the next piece here, this is kind of like the last section. This is like all about like targeting, landing pages, um, tracking, you know, keeping all your stuff accurate and then processes. So um, with targeting, there's really only four, especially if you're just going to get started that you really need to worry about. You have like, there's a lot of ways you can target on YouTube. Some of them you can get like really narrow, but one thing to keep in mind, especially with YouTube, I think I would say it's probably the same for most ad platforms, but the wider you go, the cheaper it's going to be. So the wider your audience is, the cheaper your leads are going to be. And there's a sweet spot. So you just got to kind of figure out what that is. So broad, like we have campaigns that are broad that crush. This is just literally means you're just targeting the markets that you want. Yeah, just location, no audiences or anything like that. And then you're just running the ads. Like if I'm testing a new group of ads and I plan on using one of these targeting methods, I'm still going to run another campaign with broad targeting just to see if their algorithm can go and find it, you know, for cheaper, basically. And just to clear that up, anytime you launch, let's say a new angle and you have three ads in your new angle, you would always launch one of the other three and then broad as well. So you'd have two campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. Unless okay. it's like really, really specific, I would, I would run them both. Like to give you an example, like, like keywords here, like you can target people who are searching like those expensive search terms, like need to sell my house fast, all that stuff, and then target them on YouTube and that crushes. Uh, but I'll also run those exact same ads on broad just to see, and I'll run them. Like if I run them both at a $50 a day budget, and then I find that like they're relatively the same, then I'll just keep them both because then we'll just get more like horizontal scale. Like, cause that's the other thing too. Like one campaign, one ad group, same ads, like as you scale up, like it's hard to get one campaign up to like a thousand dollars a day because it's just, it's just hard. Like it just gets more expensive the more you scale up, but the more stuff you're testing and whatever's working, you scale that stuff up slow. It, it works really, really well on YouTube, at least our Google. So just for people to understand too, there's two ways of scaling your ads. It's like vertically, which is like spending more on one campaign and then horizontally, which is like spending the same amount on one campaign, but starting another campaign with like a different targeting. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And so when you, I know you're going to get to the rest of the audiences, but if you were to start a campaign and let's say you started with $50 a day, like how are you like choosing your price, like the amount you're going to increase your prices per, or your spend per day, excuse me. And then like, mm -hmm. do you, like, what do you do if you, I, or unless that's like what you're going to get to next, like how do you scale your spend basically? No, that's, that's a good question. So like what I would do first is like get really, like really test stuff, like test a couple campaigns first, figure out like what some average numbers you're getting are like cost per lead. Once you figure out like how many of those leads end up qualified, how many of those in turn into appointments, contracts, whatever, then from there, like reverse engineer those, find the most you can spend for a lead on like an initial lead. And then if something like, let's say like the most you can spend for a lead is $300. If you're getting leads for 50 bucks, just double the budget. Like it doesn't matter because you're getting them for so cheap. Just keep doubling the budget. If you're getting them like in the range, because like if you're if you're trying to get to like a thousand a day and you have like you don't you don't you're not gonna have like 40 campaigns going. But if you have like say you have 10 campaigns and one's getting leads for like 50 bucks a day and you're spending or getting leads for 50 bucks, you're spending 50 bucks a day, double it to a hundred bucks a day. If it's starting to get in the ballpark, then you would just increase it by like 20% per day until you've you know, unless you've gone over that like maximum cost per lead, in which case you would just do the exact opposite and go down 20% per day till you get to where you're comfortable. And then there's a sweet spot too. Like you might find that like, if you increase the budget too far, um, and this is all just like a numbers thing, it's like a judgment call. Um, if you increase the budget too much and you're getting leads that are, that are, you're okay with, like you're okay with getting leads for this price, but you're spending a thousand dollars a day or yeah, you're getting, let's say you're spending a thousand dollars a day, $200 per lead, but you could spend $500 a day and get a hundred dollars a lead to get the same amount of leads. Then just spend the lower amount, right? Like just spend the lower amount and go, go sideways. 
and just launch more campaigns. So that's, yeah. that's, that's how I would do it. Like I'd go up and down to kind of find the sweet spot. And then once you kind of found it, you're like, this campaign's not really going to scale much more. Try a new idea, try a new angle, and then go from there. That makes sense. What, what is like a cost per lead that you're seeing right now on a cost, like cost per deal? Cost per lead for like in Southern California, it just depends. Cause like what we do is like, so let me just go down here really quick to show you. Like we're capturing data in the beginning and then we're, I'm going to go into all this in a minute here. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, and then we're also capturing leads that, that come like all the way through our funnel. Based yeah, on before that. You get, yeah. Before you get into that, let's go to the, to finish the targeting, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into that stuff. But like right now, like I just launched a camp, a new campaign that's crushing. We're getting like $50 leads in Southern California. Um, they're not text verified. But like the numbers pencil out. So it's like, it doesn't matter. Like just a stupid return. How so many like, like, is it roughly to a deal right now? Like on average ish. I think it's it's hard to say like, because we will we'll try so many different. Yeah. Like it might be like when we do text verified, it might be like 10, 15. When we do like no text verified and we're taking like the minimal amount possible to get $50 leads, like it might be like 30. So it's oh. like, yeah, it, it, it just depends really it depends on like what like because we've we've tested to where like we don't even have a form like we are we don't even have like a survey it's just a form but we've kind of like dialed that in so I'll, I'll explain like where we're at now and then how we like how we get those numbers now because it is different and it's different how you like tell google about it too same applies for like facebook you do the same thing on facebook but it's just i'm, I'm not familiar with that platform as much but yeah I'll, I'll get into that in a second but just to finish this out another another way you can target is interest or like in market so like one of our inherited campaigns there's an interest on google that's literally like people who are trying to sell the house that they just inherited it's a huge audience. Like it happens a lot more than people think. That's an audience. Similar websites. That's like, if you have big competitors, you can literally just put their websites where they send traffic and, and you can target the exact same traffic, exact same traffic. So I'm saying um, GG Homes. GG Homes. Yeah. I buy SD. Like it didn't yeah. work that well, to be honest. Like I think they get a lot of, yeah, it didn't work that well. It's, it's tough. Like we, we've, we've had like one campaign that, that took off from this, but most of our stuff is like interest keywords and broad. Um, but if you're like really, if you're like a nationwide, I don't know how many people do that in your group, but like if you do like a lot of states, you have a huge audience, this can work really well. So yeah, so that's just like some audiences you can target. Landing pages, there's not a whole lot to tell you on this, except for just like you have to test constantly. Real quick before you go into landing pages, yeah. Rashad, I have yeah. a pretty good question. Sorry, yeah, I don't have the chat up, so I can't see. No, you're good. Which targeting audiences bring in the generally more motivated leads or is that more based on creatives it's kind of based on creative yeah it's mostly based on the angle and the creative i would say and then i, I just have like four to get started here like the other ones too would be like demand gen and performance max which don't necessarily like apply to the same rules because you're going to be creating a specific like performance max audience or audiences and then same thing for demand gen that's like once you have data, you you might want to run something like that. But those like performance max has brought in a lot of deals. Broad has brought in a lot of deals. This this had brought in a lot of deals early on. Like it's more expensive to get leads with that. But like this is this broad and then like performance and max and demand gen have probably brought us in the most deals as of recently. Yeah. And then that's mostly based on like having a good creative to be, it would make sense. Yeah. Like, well, performance max, like I didn't add that in here because I figured like no one had done anything with like YouTube or anything or YouTube ads or Google ads really much. Um, but you do want to have like some data before you like run that because you're going to, you're going to use that data to create like a good audience inside performance max or inside demand gen. The good thing about those is like, you can scale those up really, really high. It's, it's, it's like the creative is a mixture. So it's like search, display, discovery, video. Most of the stuff comes through video for us, even on performance max. But yeah, to answer your question, like creative is really what like, because like I've ripped ads from, from other people and they just, they crashed, like they didn't work. So yeah, creative is really, I would say the most important, like the copy that you end up, like how you write your ad and then, and then the creative. Makes sense. Cool. All right. Keep going. Cool. So with landing pages, not a whole lot here. Like 
you really just have to test, like test above the fold. Below the fold, like I said, like it's not the most important thing in the world. 75% of people that are going to come through aren't going to scroll once they hit. So above the fold is the most important. Like if you're going to spend time doing it, test the headlines, test the forms, because that's where you're going to get the most leveraged improvements. If you have that like absolutely dialed, then you can test the other stuff, which is like the rest of your page. And then, so this is like kind of more advanced, but this is like the form itself, how it talks to Google and kind of how we've set it up. Let me move this so I can see. All right. So it looks like a mess. So just bear with me here. Like basically what happens is when a person comes through, we want to capture some type of data that's very like immediate. Doesn't mean the person's qualified. Doesn't mean anything we want to capture whatever we can, like you can just do an address here. And then when you collect that and say the person doesn't finish, you can skip trace it later if you want. Right now we're capturing address and phone as the first step in the form. We're not asking for anything else that just gets them into the form. When that happens, we wanna make sure that there's an automation or a zap, whatever, to send that to your CRM and then to notify your reps that something just came in. And then you're going to want to send that data to Google. And this is more advanced. Like if you're just starting out with YouTube ads, I wouldn't worry about all this necessarily. I would just worry about the, the form itself. And then you can worry about this stuff later on because it's pretty complicated to set up. I use Leads Hook. You can always pay someone to set it up. Like there's people who can help you set that stuff up. Um, but anyway, so we collect the first one. And that's kind of like, let's say the value for us on that is $100. This is, these are just arbitrary numbers. These are just to give you an idea. So let's say the value that's $100. And then they get to the next step, which is, is your property you know, listed with an agent? If they say no, that automatically like puts them dramatically higher on in terms of being qualified. So we're going to tell Google that this person's worth like two and a half as much to us as this person is, right? And then as they go through the form, if someone completely finishes, then that's like twice as more, twice as valuable. And you can back these numbers out if you have a lot of data, twice as valuable to us as somebody who said that their property is not listed, but they didn't finish the form, right? So these are firing in real time. So like these automations, when someone moves on to the next step, it's firing, it's being sent to Google. We already have contact data, so we can send that as a conversion. Now, when we send this, this, and then this, what Google basically does with that information is like their algorithms, like so good. Like it's like AI is like the best in like advertising. That's like really where it started, like being awesome. So like, they're really good at being able to use that information and say like, Hey, this is a type of person based on what they search, based on what they do, based on what they say that is likely to fill this form all the way out. We'll bid a little bit higher on this person or this person doesn't really fill out forms on the internet. So, you know, maybe we'll bid pretty low on this, but they use that information to not only like build the different groups of people that it's going to go after, because it's basically like expanding on groups as you expand your budget. It gives them more data to be more accurate, but it also gives them data to accurately bid on, on you know, like who they're going to show the ad in front of basically. And I know that's like kind of complicated, but this is, once they get here, it's just enriching the data. So that just... Basically means you're going to want to like send that data uh, also to your CRM and then also to your reps. So that's kind of like the uh, overall form and like how the tech stuff really works. Um, and again, like I can Chandler, if you want, like after this, if I can figure out how to export this, if you guys like want this whole sheet, I can send it to, I'll try Maybe. to send it to Chandler and like he can send it to you guys. And then the last thing I have is just processes. Like if you guys are like established, like you probably already have this dialed in, but it's like especially with internet leads, like you have to get to them in five minutes or less, or you're throwing money down the drain. You know, I recommend like some people are like more aggressive than this, less aggressive. It's just whatever, but at least double dialing people every day for the first seven days and then having drip campaigns, text and email set up. These are all just a must to have in place before you, before you even like, before I would run any traffic, but that's it guys. Like if you have any questions or anything, like, like I got time, I think we got like 15 minutes or so. Like I can answer any questions you guys have. Yeah, I was going to ask, what lead form are you using for all the automation, like job form or? No, we so we use lead hook. I'll be honest, like it's a, it's a bitch to use. Like it's really hard, like not really hard, but it's fairly complicated to set up all that like back end stuff. They have like, you get an onboarding call with it, with like a legit expert. So like you can get the most out of that. He'll record the call. So if I, if I was going to do it myself, what I would do is I'd set up that onboarding call 
I'd have a form that I wanted to copy essentially. And then I'd say like, can you show me how to copy this and record the call and then send it to me? So then you can kind of do it yourself. Um, but it is a little bit, a little bit complicated to use. Makes sense. But it's like the best when it comes to like working with Google and stuff or. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I mean, like. I don't really know of any other like forum software that can do all that stuff up here, like send based on like different button presses, like data back to Google and stuff like that. We use, I used to use Git lead forms, which is like really easy to use and it can do like a lot of basic stuff. Like it can, ha you can have like a, a fu fully functional form using Git lead forms, but it's just, it doesn't have the, the ability to do any of this other backend stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. And then do you, are you, do you work with other people as well? Other clients? Yeah, I, I, I just started doing that. I was just working with John, but now, you know, working with three people right now, we're working with other people. I, I'll probably work with like maybe like 10 people total. Cause I don't want to like, you know, have too many clients. So I, I, I plan on doing this all myself for, mm -hmm. you know, the entirety of it. But yeah, if anyone wants to talk about that, they can, they can email me and happy to talk about it. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, what's your email? It's it's Corey C O R Y at dealsource.io. If anyone's looking to work with Corey, anyone have any questions on this? I think like what you showed, I mean, because you're also getting, I mean, for context, like you guys are only doing this in like for with John, like in San Diego, right? Or in Southern California, LA and San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Like you guys are getting leads for like, let's just call it 75 bucks, maybe 50 to hundred dollars. I mean, that's like super cheap because if you ran into more markets like it would be even cheaper is that how google works too it's cheaper the yeah. more markets too. yeah like the bigger like if you're doing like multiple states it's going to be cheaper like the bigger the audience is the cheaper it is and then also like the less competitive the cheaper it is so like if we were doing the exact same funnel like in basically any other state it would be probably cheaper by a lot yeah yeah that's crazy that's pretty fucking sick yeah i think a lot of it comes into your copy your hooks are really good and I'm sure your body, do you have like an example of like an ad that you like a full one that's like actual live so we can like see it? Yeah. Let me see if I can get one. Let me, let me unshare my screen now. Cause I don't want to like share all the ads that we have for other yeah. clients, but let me see if there's one that I can just share as a freebie here, but let me hold on a second. I can't stop your sharing. Chandler, do you do any like paid ads or anything like that? Or we run a pretty good amount of Facebook ads right now for uh, level up. But I'm thinking of starting YouTube ads as well. We've run some, but like we ran like, yeah, we haven't really run any to be honest, but I think it honestly would do really well. I think it would be better than Facebook. Have your Facebook costs gone up like in the last couple of months? Yeah, we're getting our CPM is definitely higher. Like it's yeah. probably like, because I remember. Yeah, I have friends that are like, that have like the lead gen type companies, like lead Zola, like for different industries. And that's what they've been saying. They just yeah, said like. I think they just jacked it up like four, like a, six weeks ago. Yeah. When I started noticing it, like our impressions are, because we track impressions on a weekly basis and we went from getting like 200,000 impressions to like 80,000. Okay. Yeah. Here's one that we still run. Oh, you meant an actual ad? I thought you meant just like a kind of like copy here. Oh yeah. I was going to say like a video. Okay. Yeah. I can show you the video. The copy is good too. Video is cool. Cause then you can see like, I don't know. I think like I'm a visual person and I know if I was like watching this and like had no idea, I'd want to like see like, what does that look like? You know? No, I was going to say, let me log into our uh, our YouTube account real quick. And then I'll, I'll show you one. Another thing too, is there like, I know with Facebook, there's like an ad library. Is there the same thing with Google? No, which is great. No. A little tip to you guys for Facebook ad library though, if you want, like people will find your business and then try to like rip you off with Facebook through the Facebook ad library. With like my, some of my friends I was talking about that like run ads like on Facebook for clients. What they'll do is like with their main brand, they'll put up like dummy ads at like a dollar a day to throw off your competitors. And then like an obscure brand that has like your real. That um, makes sense. Also, how long does your ad typically work until you have to make a new one? Like how long does it, until it burns out? It's like a very long time. We have ads that we started running like initial tests and then like we still run. That was like seven months ago. Wow. And they're not really fading very much. But a pretty big market. Like if you have a really small market, you probably, you probably, your ads probably fatigue a little bit more. In those two metros, you're going to have like 10 million people. So. Okay. Here's one uh, for inherited. So I already showed you all the hook for this one, but here's an example. Of one. California residents. If you have recently inherited a property from a family member or a loved one and want to get the cash you deserve for it without the hassle, then listen up. Not only will we buy your house, but we are so confident in what we do that we guarantee to get you the cash 
you deserve for your home in less than 30 days. On top of that, we will cover the repairs, mortgage payments, and any moving expenses that you have during the process. So if you're looking to sell your house quickly without the BS, without any lowball offers, then click the button below. Answer a few questions. It takes about 15 seconds and we'll give you a fair, legitimate cash offer today. So if you're ready to stop wasting your time with realtors that only bring you tire kickers and investors that only give you undervalued lowball offers, then click the button below to get a cash offer on your property today. Our process is fast, easy, and hassle-free. Simply click the button below, answer a few questions, and receive a fair cash offer for your home. Thank you, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. California. Could you hear it? Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's really good. I like. It. I think a big thing to note is if you are filming these ads, it's tonality and energy is super important. Like that, John's is like John's energy is spot on. You definitely need to. That's why it's like better to do it yourself, especially if you're like if you're the sales guy too, because you probably know about like tonality. But sometimes you'll hire like actors that will read it like like it's like a play, like it's it's not the right kind of energy. But yeah, you're 100 percent right. You do want to have the right the right energy for sure. So many questions. I think this is super valuable, Corey. This is awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, you can email me and I'll answer them. Or if you have questions now, we've got a few minutes. You said you are taking on like other clients or you're not right now. I missed that part where you, when you shared your email. Yeah. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And Chandler, I think he might have shared my email or I'll send it to him after this. Yeah. I, I got it. I'll, sh I'll shoot you an email. You said ad spend 300 per month and it costs $50 per lead. Are you, are you asking about like the total budget or like for $300 a month, like what John's budget is or? I think he's just asking yeah. like, what, what, what do you need to spend in order to have success with YouTube ads? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, you do have to have some budget. I, I would recommend like at least to start in like an easier market. I would say like at least 2000 to spend to like, you know, start out like 2000 a month is what I would recommend. Cause you can kind of like, that's enough to play with and like figure out what's working and have things to scale. Yeah. And and the one that we're getting like $50 leads, that's because we're, we have a low budget on that. It's like $50. If you spend less money, you should get cheaper leads. Yeah. Like if your budget's $200 or sorry, $2,000 a month, like you should be able to get like the most efficient leads. Cause you're going, cause like, I guess like also to, to your point, it's like you're going after that first little small audience, you don't have to really expand much. So it's going to just get the best people. Yeah. Like if you were starting with that budget too, I would recommend just do like three different campaigns, three, three different campaigns, maybe two different angles. And then one, whatever angle you thought was the best, try a different type of targeting. So like, say you did like two campaigns that were keyword targeting and you do one that's broad. That's, that's how I would set that up like 30, $30 a day or something like that. If that pencils out to that, um, that's, that's how I would start. Great. That's good advice. And then how long does it take? I think there's another question too, that because like your, your ad account has to optimize. How long does it take to start getting like qualified leads or does it like happen pretty quickly? Yeah, it happens. It happens pretty quickly. I mean, like as soon as you're like, you'll, you'll start, you'll probably get some like whacked out leads for like the first couple of days, like while Google's trying to figure it out, but you'll start getting leads like pretty quickly. Like you should be getting quality leads like within the first couple of weeks. And then after like 30 days, like if you're consistent, like you haven't like you know, turned everything off, then you should be like getting pretty dialed leads by, by the end of a month, I would say. Sounds good. This was really good. And yeah, I appreciate y'all having me. Uh, yeah. Thanks you guys. And uh, yeah. See you guys later. Oh yeah. Peace bro. All right guys. So as I was interviewing Corey, I realized that this was the best presentation that I've ever seen. I was blown away. The information that he gave was world-class in the way to run your YouTube campaigns. And not only like, was the information great, but also the strategy itself is what I really love. No one else in this space of wholesale is running YouTube ads. And if they are, they're keeping on the DL because they're crushing with it. And they don't want it to get oversaturated like SMS did. And like all the other great lead channels did once people started talking about it. But if you get in early with YouTube, you can make huge ROIs and not have tons of risk because lead costs are going to be cheap. Media costs is cheap and all this stuff is really, really dialed. And that's why I wanted to bring this to you guys because I'm partnering Corey to bring you guys a service that is going to be able to generate you leads at an extremely low cost that are extremely motivated. So if this is something that you want in your business, you want to have inbound leads coming in from YouTube where no one else is having it. In my opinion, it's a blue ocean. Then go ahead down below this video. There's a link to book a call with my team on how we'll walk through exactly what it looks like to generate leads for you, how we'll set it up, how we'll manage your campaigns, how we'll do all that kind of stuff for you. So you don't have to do it and you have leads
leads coming on autopilot. So, so all you gotta do is go down below the video, click the link below and book a call with my team and we will get you set up and have inbound leads coming in. So hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you in the next one. Peace.